Welcome to another tutorial on FortiGate 50. So today in this video, we'll see how to configure the uh, cert based VPN IPsec when you have the peer end signed by a different uh, certificate authority certificate and the local end which is the FortiGate end is signed by a different uh, certificate authority certificate. So on my screen, you can see a simple network diagram explaining the topology. On the left hand side, I have the 48 firewall and the inside network here is 14140-4108 slash 32 configured on port two. Just for the demonstration of this particular IPsec using cert. And the remote ends uh, protected IP is 14140-4129 and the peer IP for IPsec is 192.168.0.129 on PFSense firewall. Locally, it is 192.168.0.108 slash 24 on 40 gate firewall, which is configured on port 1. The certificate that we will be using on 40 gate firewall is uh, the one signed by the local certificate authority on the 40 gate firewall and on the remote end, there is another uh, certificate authority generated on the PFSense firewall and the server server that the PFSense firewall is using for the identity is signed using that particular uh, remote CSR. That's all a pretty simple network topology. So let's uh, quickly move on to the configuration of PF, uh, configuration of the 40 gate firewall. I'm not covering the configuration of PFSense firewall. Um, if you would like to have the configurational uh, video for the PFSense firewall, do comment in the section in, in the sections below so that I can make a separate video on the same. Uh, quickly moving on to our configuration of 48 firewall. So as you can see on my screen, I have the 48 firewall access, by the way, this is 7.2.0 version firmware version so interface as you can see port 1 is configured with an IP of 192.168.0.108 port 2 1404 which is our internal network I've given it as slash 32 just for the demonstration purpose so let's try to configure the IPsec VPN first of all you will have to go to systems certificates and you'll have to make sure that you have the local CA cert imported. In my case, it is already imported here. You can see here CAIPSEC. And the local cert that I'm going to use is this one, which is already signed and imported. So I'm not going to re-import the same. You can see here it is uh, issued by TTS, Tech Talk Security. And on top, you can see the issuer name here. So this is the CA cert, this is the server cert that I'm I'm going to use on the FortiGate firewall or the local identification. And for remote, I don't have any remote CA cert. So let, let's try to let's try to go to the other end's firewall configuration and let's see if we can import the certificate. So this is the remote certificate CA cert. Let's let me try to export this. Okay, so now we have this. Let us try to export the key as well, if in case needed on the 48 firewall. So we have this certificate imported from the other end, which is the remote ends uh, CA cert. Let's try to import the same. Click on create slash import CA certificate. Click on file, upload. Click on downloads. And then we'll have to select the cert, which is quit proxy, which is the remote CA cert. Click OK. Now you should see an entry with the name CA underscore cert underscore one. You can see here canonical name, squid proxy, which is the remote ends uh, host name. And status is valid. And it is under remote CA certificate. 
so that's all is needed uh, in terms of the certificate one is the local ca cert that has to be inside the local ca certificate and the local certificate which is signed using this particular ca cert which is this one so now let's move on to the ipsec configuration so click on ipsec and then Okay, so inside VPN, click on IPsec VPN, click on create IPsec tunnel, name it as a third IPsec, click on custom, click on next, and then we'll have to specify the remote gateway, which is in our case 192.168.0.129, as per the diagram that I shared in the first step. And the local interface is going to be WAN port one. Not traversal, um, we don't really need it, but we can disable this. Um, that peer detection, no need of this. Instead of pre-shared key, under authentication, you will have to select signature, which is the RSA based signature. And click on inside the cert name, you'll have to select the local cert. So as I said, FG is the cert signed by this uh, signed by the CA that I showed you, which is local to the 40 gate firewall. So I'm clicking on the 40 gate certificate signed by the local CA cert. And accept type for the peer option is going to be again peer certificate. And inside the peer certificate, you will see an option to create an entry. For example, I'm going to name it as PF. And here you will have to specify the remote uh, CA. Our In our case, it is going to be CA underscore cert underscore one, which is the remote ends uh, CA cert. So this is the one. Let's try to click OK. Make sure you don't update the subject in, incorrectly. Otherwise, you will end up, uh, you know, uh, in a cert failure error. So click OK to save the configuration. Now we can select the PF in the PS certificate section. You don't have to really specify the server cert. You will have to specify the CA cert. This is the peer profile. Well, you can do it from the CLI as well. For example, if you go to CLI config user peer and then you can you can specify or add the entries here which will then reflect in the um, in the the ipsec vpn configuration so you can click quickly create the entries and then should be available there so i'm not covering that so if you want you can co continue using the cli to create the peer and then add the CSR. Moving on to our uh, configuration for phase one proposal. Well, let us match the phase one proposal. As you can see on my screen, let's move on to the IP second. See what is the proposal? AES 256, SHA 256, group two. And the lifetime, I believe, is. Uh, a6400. So let's try to create the same. Group 2. AES256. SHA256. Local ID is going to be the certificate that we have uploaded by default for the cert based VPN. And remote is going to be the remote cert distinguished name in the ASN.1 format. No exot authentication. And for the phase two, let's try to check the configuration for the phase two. So this is phase two. AES 256, SHA 256, ESP. 
you can see the protected subnets we'll have to specify the same on the 40 gate firewall as well 4320 let's try to edit and let's try to put the ip address as local is going to be 14140408 And remote is going to be 14140 slash 32. And if you click on advanced section, you will see encryption. It has to be set to 256 SHA 256. And then PFS is disabled on the remote end and 43200 which is exactly matching click ok ok seems like something we have missed Let's try to save this. Let's try to recheck the configuration before proceeding. Okay, seems like everything is okay now. Everything is matching. Let's move on to the network and let's try to create a static route pointing to the remote subnet, which is 14140.40.129. Pointing to the IPsec interface that we have, IPsec, third IPsec, click OK to save the configuration. Now we have the route as well to route the traffic into the IPsec using third base. let me quickly show you the cert information once again so this is the local ca cert and this is the cert signed using this particular ca cert and this is the remote ca cert so i have not imported the remote server cert instead i have imported the ca cert for the firewall configuration on 40 gate so that's all pretty much in the configuration part let's try to move on to the remote end and let's try to bring up this particular tunnel seems like we have missed the configuration of uh, policy here so let's try to quickly configure the policy from IPsec interface to port 2, which is our internal port, having the subnet protected. Let's try to update the incoming port as I've set IPsec, outgoing as port 2. For time being, I'll keep it as all, destination as all, service as ICMP, let's say, all ICMP click save okay so now we have the incoming policy configure let's try to clone this in reverse and let's try to enable this now i believe we are good to go so now we have the outgoing policy incoming policy to accept the traffic Let's try to check the status of the tunnel. So tunnel is on van port one. Okay, it is enabled. Let's try to initiate some traffic and see. As you can see, phase one is up. Let's try to bring up the phase two.
and phase two is again up you can see the local and remote subnet protected on the remote end and the id information this is the remote end this is the 40 gate end let us try to check the status So you can see here, this is the phase one, local address, remote address, and peer ID, which is the PFSense firewall established. Peer identification, one more time. This is the key proposal, direction initiator. Let's try to check the status of the IPsec. So this is the phase two information, as you can see, proxy ID, which is the traffic selector, source 14140-4108, destination 14140-4129, lifetime, Encryption and decryption key, SPI incoming, outgoing. Let's try to initiate some traffic and check the status. As you can see, I'm able to ping the remote end's IP. And if I quickly check the SA information here on the 40 gate firewall, I should see the incoming and outgoing packet increasing. You can see here decrypted packet and encrypted packet. This is the number and this is the bytes. So you can see here, I'm able to uh, initiate the ping and the traffic is going through the IPsec VPN where we have used two different certificates signed by two different uh, certificate authority. So that's all in this video. If you have any question, do leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. And at last, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. See you in the next one. Bye.